Today I'm going to talk you through setting up your own portfolio website. As a designer, your portfolio is going to be what helps you find clients and find jobs and you want it to be full of your very best work, the work that you want to be doing more of. Having your portfolio online is going to be the easiest way for clients to see all your work in one place. There are lots of sites like Dribbble or Behance where you can upload your work to it and create projects. But I just think it's much more professional to have your own space to show off your work. Obviously you can have a Dribbble profile as well, but to have your own website that features all your work and also talks a bit about you and about your process is going to be much more professional and much more useful. There are many ways to go about making a website, but if coding isn't your strong point, then you might want to look at using a website building tool like Squarespace. Even if coding isn't your skill set, it can be really handy to use one of these things because that way you can get a site up and running really quickly and be able to focus on other things. My portfolio is actually hosted on Squarespace for exactly that reason and I chose that over the other platforms because it has a really good reputation in the design community and also just because I knew it would be easy to use and that help would be available from the Squarespace support if I needed it. I've had a really good experience with it and I'm going to use it as an example for setting up a portfolio today but you can apply the tips that I'm giving you to however you're going to set up your website. There's lots of themes on Squarespace but to start your site I would suggest going with one from the portfolio section, but the avenue theme in particular is really good. You want a theme to start with that is quite plain so that you can customize it to be unique by adding your own little touches and also so that then your work is going to stand out. Avenue is the theme that I've used and as you can see I've tweaked the design to make it my own and there's lots of other portfolios in the Squarespace examples that also use avenue and they're all quite different. So you don't need to worry that using a theme means your design is just going to look like everyone else's because you can be creative with it. I would suggest looking at the theme and then doing some wireframing to work out how you're going to tweak things to make it your own. Then I would honestly just suggest diving straight in and playing around with the settings, watching tutorials for whatever service it is you're using so you can work out how to make the theme do what you want. Remember to think about what your site will look like across lots of different screen sizes as well but the beauty of using a service like Squarespace is that all the themes come built in with a mobile version of the template so you're good to go. The key elements that I think your portfolio should have are the projects, obviously, a blurb about each one, maybe even an in-depth case study if there's something that's worth going into, an about page and a contact page with links to your social media to make that really accessible. If they're relevant though, I mean there's probably no need to link to your Tumblr that's full of pictures of pretty dresses and there's definitely no need to point a client or a potential employer towards your personal Facebook profile either. Another good thing to have if you're looking to do freelance work is a page about your process. This is going to let clients know what it's going to be like working with you and it's also going to make them feel like you definitely know what you're doing because it's all laid out step by step. Brent Galloway has a really good one and so does Sarah Dyan and I will leave links to them down below along with a couple of others that I think are really good to look at for some inspiration. I think it's really good for portfolios to start off with an overview page where you can see lots of your work at once because that way when someone looks at your site they're going to be able to get an idea straight away of the type of projects that you do. When it comes to what projects to actually include in your portfolio, like I said before, they should only be your best and they should be tailored to the type of work that you want to be doing. If you really want to be designing websites but your portfolio is mostly full of poster designs for example, you're going to want to work on some more great web projects to include to make that balance a bit better. Because otherwise someone looking at your site might think that posters are your speciality so you might not be best for designing a website for them because those are quite different skills. And that's why it can take a while to build up a portfolio that gets you the kind of jobs that you want to be doing, especially when you're new to the industry. It is good to include a little bit of variety though, especially if the job you're going for is going to involve a bit of variety. Take my portfolio for example. Most recently I applied for a marketing design role that had a web design focus but I knew I was also going to be having to do graphic design things there as well. So I included lots of web design projects but also ones that showed that I had print skills as well. Another good thing to include can be really well considered personal projects and that's why I have my little t-shirt company in my portfolio. Personal projects like that show that you're really passionate about what you do so much so that you give up your free time to do it as well and that's going to show you as a really driven person which is obviously a desirable quality to have in someone that you're going to hire. Having big clear pictures of your projects is an absolute must so take your time with the photography of your projects. I made a video a while ago with my friend John who is a photographer where he gave some advice for designers taking pictures for their portfolio so I'll leave a link to that down below you should check it out. When you've got your portfolio all set up or your projects are loaded and ready to go you've written a blurb about each one, you've filled in your contact details and you've written an about page. Just go over it one last time with a fine tooth comb to pick up 
anything that you may have missed in the building process just do some quality control and check it all out thoroughly before you launch it i hope you found that video helpful and i want to wish you the best of luck in going to create your portfolio they haven't sponsored this video but i got squarespace to send me a discount code for you guys so if you want to get 10 percent off a squarespace account you can use the code charlie marie tv to do that i'm not getting anything from that they're not paying me to say this i just thought it would be really helpful for you if you're going to set up a portfolio because like i said i found that a really good tool to use and it's what I would recommend. So go give it a try, dive in there and start showing off your work. If you've got any questions, if anything I said wasn't clear or you'd like some more information on, I suppose, leave them down below in the comments. We can have a chat down there or you can contact me on Twitter because I'm on there all of the time. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and subscribe to my channel if you think you'd like to hear more from me. There's more design and style and DIY videos coming your way. So I will see you next week. Bye.